So, uh, Todd, this is probably everybody, um, but, uh, and I'm going to leave us unmuted, but if, if you hear yourself or hear feedback, let me know and I can mute it. Okay? So, we're just going to go ahead and let you start. All right, everybody, this is Todd. Uh, all right, guys. Um, sorry that I can't be there in person, um, but I will look forward to seeing you guys in about a month. Um, and we'll be sitting around that sign up sheet uh, soon. Um, great job on all the Eclipse coverage, by the way. And it's a great job for actually coming back into the office uh, after what I'm sure was an incredibly long day. So um, I'll try to keep this uh, as brief as I can. Interrupt me at any time with uh, questions. And uh, just going to give you an overview of kind of where we are with the video right now and how it applies to, of course, what you guys are going through right now, which is newsroom reinvention. So with that, let me share my screen so you don't have to look at me. There we go. Share. Okay. All right. All right, guys. So since um, January of 2016, you can see the light blue line there is our actual number. Um, and then, of course, the uh, darker blue line was our target. You can see that we've consistently exceeded our video views. Um, Sorry. All right. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah. I'm just okay. messing with the screen in a stupid way. Keep talking. Okay. okay. So in 2016, we had um, about 74 million views on your JW player. Of course, that's our owned and operated player. Um, and uh, we had 61,000 videos were published um, across all of our properties. That's three times the number that we did in 2015. And um, that equates to about 1.5 million hours of video watched in 2016, which is a pretty astounding number, I think. Um, so this year we're looking to hit about 100,000, sorry, um, 100 million <laughs> JW views. Uh, right now, I just ran the numbers, we have about 60 million views so far, uh, versus about 39 million at the same time in 2016. So definitely seeing some great growth here. All right, and, and of course, uh, with our growth, it also comes growth in revenue. 2015 is a partial year, we had 1.5 million. 2016 jumped up to 4.1, and we are projecting 2017 to have about $7 million in video revenue. And we are looking at uh, great growth um, around reinvention, and we are also looking at some new uh, third party. Um, video partners, uh, including Tout, and uh, we are also wor working on some partnerships um, with Facebook. Facebook is offering a deal where you can add digital ads, and so we're exploring that with a couple of newsrooms right now to see if there's a good potential there. And um, we also have um, the Title Town series that was produced last year. Um, that is now on Facebook Watch, and so there's some revenue attached with that. So some exciting things are happening on the revenue side. Uh, both on and off of our own sites, so it's really good to have. Um, so why video? Well, obviously there's a revenue play, um, but we want to, you know, it, it's not about the clicks, it's not about just chasing the viral videos for our newsrooms, um, you know, video is not a gimmick, it can be a really, really strong storytelling tool uh, that can do things that photo and, of course, text um, are not capable of doing. So. Um, really want to em emphasize that is that yes, I mean, we are going to go for uh, the viral videos, we're going to look for those and we'll enjoy that traffic, but we are looking to use video telling as a really strong storytelling tool. Um, you guys have probably heard already, um, you know, that only a small portion of our stories drive a lot of our traffic. Well, as you can guess, that translates over to video too. So only 3.2% of our videos published equaled about 50% of our traffic. Um, so the idea here, just as you've been hearing, I'm, I'm sure through newsroom reinvention, is that we want to try to get smarter about what we're going after and what we're producing. So kind of a, you know, our favorite mantra: let's work smarter, not harder. Um, so in this reinvention, here are here's an overview of the video role, so, and we'll talk about what their daily responsibilities and and uh, what the tools. Um, that are needed here in just a second. So uh, we're really looking to have three key uh, video-centric roles um, 
positions in your newsroom. So one is, of course, a visuals editor, one is a video producer, and then, of course, your, video, your visual journalists. Um, so the visual editor, this person is really meant to you know, manage, assign, and edit. So they're going to be the ones leading the newsroom and, and brainstorming about video. Um, of course, all editors are responsible for making sure that they're working with this visuals editor. But um, you know, this person is going to be attending the morning meetings. They're going to be discussing stories, and they're going to be determining you know, who should handle this. Is this a short video that a reporter could probably do on their phone, or is this going to be something that requires a little more uh, complexity in the edit? So maybe we need to send one of our visual journalists out to do it. Um, you know, on the uh, editing side, we really want to make sure that we're watching videos before they go up as much as possible. Clearly, not possible in a breaking news situation. Um, but, you know, as we all know, editors make us better. Um, so we want to make sure that we're watching stuff and making suggestions on the front end before these things are published. Um, all right. So the roles of the video producer. This is probably the key to growth in all of our newsrooms, honestly. Um, this person is curating, uh, they're producing, and they're aggregating. So they are looking for uh, archive videos that are going to go into stories. Um, they're looking for um, you know, user-generated content that they can repurpose into a quick video to go into a popular story. They're looking for that surveillance video. They're looking for any, anything in the public domain from like the police departments or a fire department. Um, you know, it's not about finding a cute cat video necessarily. It's about finding that surveillance video of that truck crashing into a building. Um, we, you guys know as well as I do that Breaking news drives a tremendous amount of traffic for your site, especially in the video realm. So the more type of, of those videos that this person can grab, of course, the better. Um, but they're also going to be producing and editing some video in house. So um, it might be, like I said before, they might grab, you know, with permission, five or six videos off social media, and they kind of smash that together and have that tell a little story. Um, this person's also going to be watching a treasury like a hawk here. Um, making sure that any and all videos, uh, or sorry, any and all trending stories um, have have video in them. Um, and we all know that videos perform best in stories, and that's why you know it's important to check the chart feed, see those top stories, and make sure you've got some type of video on it. Doesn't have to be an original video. Um, you know, it can be something that's generated um, outside of your newsroom. Um, this person, so this video producer impact, uh, so the top 10 videos in 2016 and 2017 were all aggregated. It was all stuff, it was either like surveillance camera stuff, um, you know, um, or just other videos that folks had found. Um, so the video producer case study here, um, this is a pretty, pretty interesting example in Miami. So after they hired or, or retasked, I have to say, a couple folks to being video producers, they saw a 490% increase in Miami and a 480% in El Nuevo. And here's looking at their month over month in Miami and El Nuevo. So of course the red arrow shows where, where they started. And you can see this trend of growth um, for both Miami and El Nuevo. So it wasn't just a fluky month that they got lucky. It, this really shows the power of having a video producer in house. Um, so, talk a little bit about um, archival video. So, um, a real time desk producer uh, saw that the story was trending here and they did a quick search and they found that Raleigh had produced a video from a campaign stop way back in October. And um, this video was added to the body of the story, it wasn't even in the lead, and that was their most, good, you know, their most viewed video of the day. So it's always important to look for those opportunities to find archive videos. You guys have done really well with uh, uh, your Repo Man video. Um, um, I, it's kind of funny, I just pulled the stats for this year. And um, that video I think was shot last year, maybe last October or November. And this year alone it has 68,000 views. So um, this is a really, really great video. Uh, here's um, so shortly after a story of how an alleged Bigfoot sighting was posted, uh, of course it started to trend, 
And uh, so Visual ed Editor went through um, and found a, found a bunch of videos. They found a, a user submitted clip of a Bigfoot sighting from about two, two years ago. They put that in the story, it had posted 100,000 views. Uh, then they added some footage from a critter cam uh, that they got from the uh, North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences that had 33,000 views. And then they found uh, deer fighting on a trail cam, which I guess they just attached that at the end. Um, and uh, that had about close to 5,000 views. Um, okay, so these are all of the tools and resources and partners that we have in order to get video into our system. Um, you all are familiar with video Videolicious. Um, probably most of you are familiar with Trello. That's where we are right now, sharing video from across all of our newsrooms. And we also put up a lot of evergreen videos. Uh, you know, uh, there's a whole list of crime videos there that are evergreen, including one like, you know, not so smooth criminals that I see that you guys have taken advantage of, and it's actually done pretty well for you. It's just a compilation of silly, uh, Criminals, I guess, caught on tape, you know, where their crime didn't go so well. And uh, it's one of those evergreen videos that can go into um, particular crime stories. Um, so, Times, uh, so New York Times video, we have an account. Uh, we can uh, typically pull a New York Times video. Um, we have AP video, of course, we can get with Story Poll, and we have. Um, Another partner called Send to News, which has a lot of sports content. And then, of course, you know that we all syndicate our content uh, directly to Inform, and uh, we do use them uh, for Perfect Pixel. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what the rules of a video journalist are. So you know, our video journalist is, um, these are typically what were your photographers, I guess, in your room. And uh, we want them to you know, plan a report produce and uh, distribute and promote their stories. Um, Really want them talking with visuals editor, reporter, and develop a game plan for uh, stories. So what you know, really think hard about what they're going to do. Is this just going to be raw footage? We do a Facebook Live. Um, you know how many you know how many photos do we need out of this? You know, really um, work together so that you guys aren't duplicating efforts. I've been hearing from a lot of uh, my newsrooms now that uh, sometimes reporters and photographers are tripping over themselves at assignments and uh, are not communicating, and so maybe they're doubling up on video efforts. Um, you know, it's really important to, to, to learn to work well together and communicate what you're going to do. Um, of course, then, you know, shoot at it, produce it, and then um, really follow through and make sure that that video gets published at the same time as the story. I think there's still um, uh, a lot of communication issues I've noticed in, in newsrooms and stories will get put up before a video will get into that story and then maybe get Facebook pushed. And so there's a lot of traffic that gets you know, left on the table because um, the coordination of getting that video into the story quickly um, wasn't there. So um, you guys have probably seen this already through uh, the newsroom reinvention. Um, you know that high public service and high traffic, that's definitely where we want to be with our videos as much as possible. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we're putting our video ideas through the same checklist that we're putting the stories through. Um, this is something that uh, Kristen Roberts, uh, the editor of the McClatchy Washington Bureau, um, wanted us to know. Uh, you know, uh, it's more than just cat videos. Uh, so when judging the Pulitzers, no stories were taken seriously that did not have a strong video component. So, um, and as we like to say, video equals everyone. Um, as you all know, when your whole room's engaged, um, those video goals are much easier to hit. Um, we also want to make sure just because we have some video-centric people in the room, it doesn't mean that it's all left to them and everyone else can go back to doing, uh, to not doing video. Um, and as you know, um, you know, while we do strive you know, to produce our, the best video storytelling we can, and I know it's disheartening as a, as a former uh, Video journals myself. It's uh, you know I would see a 30 second clip shot by a reporter that seemed to do better than the story that I put together maybe three or four hours later. But that's just the way our traffic is. When that story is high. You got to have a video in there, um, and so it's just really important to uh, work quickly as well. Um, this is the uh, what we've just talked about, and um, you know everyone in the room can produce a video that's going to. Uh, 
be popular with your viewers. So I've seen everything from a you know a shaky 45 second clip of a football player talking about fumbling a ball that was in a story that did really well. Um, you know that had like 30,000 views. So you know it, it's not just limited to um, our visual journals doing video. All right. So the poll, the uh, the rules of the report. Um, you guys should be thinking about what type of video would um, like complement your story. You know, is this going to be a narrative video? Is this an explainer? Is there a video I can aggregate? Um, you know, does another newsroom have a video that I can use? And then really think about how much time you have to produce it, etc. Um, an example: uh, there was a story in Biloxi, and they were talking about credit card scammers. And uh, you know, they thought, well, should we go out and do a story? You know, it's these credit card scammers that are targeting uh, gas stations and gas pumps. And what they did, they went on Trello, they found that another market had already done essentially the same, exact same story. They grabbed that video, they put it in their story, and it did re really well for them. So and we don't always have to be producing our own video. Um, so it's important to have these conversations on the front end. Um, let me think here. Let's skip on through. So here is the recommended video workflow where she want to assign to the reporter, the producer, or the visual journalist. Uh, you know, to develop out the idea, produce the video, make sure that somebody has eyes on it. Um, you know, they ought to write great headlines and blurbs and uh, have a great key frame and then distribute it. Um, you know, we talk a lot about video. We don't want to forget about photos. Uh, still, images are still very important to our journalism, but we are moving towards a video first workflow. Editors need, need to make sure that that expectation is very clear. It's you know, video first, and um, you know, quality of frame grabs is just increased. I never would have believed in frame grabs until one of our uh, uh, photographers in Kansas City um, published a, a really, he went out to um, a scene where a uh, bridge was being uh, taken down. And uh, he shot it with the still camera and he shot it with his video camera. He wound up catching the perfect moment on the video camera at 30 frames a second, imagine. And uh, worked that that photo up, it ran six columns, it looked great, and that's when you know everyone pretty much became believers that you know, hey, we can't take frame grabs. They're gonna look great. So, you know, let's get these moments on video and we'll take out and, and we'll do frame grabs. Um, Okay, any questions? I'll, I'll stop here for just a second to see if you guys have any questions. I'm talking kind of fast. Stone silence, that's what I like. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, we all have heard about this thing called Facebook. Uh, we've all, uh, uh, Facebook um, is really driving a lot of our video traffic. And um, I, I would say across the company about 30% of our referrals are from Facebook. Um, we're also seeing a lot of growth um, on our Facebook pages by placing native video on, in our Facebook feeds and also doing live video, um, which you guys have done quite successfully here um, the last several months easily. Um, Facebook, its algorithm will prioritize live and native video over link posts. Um, so you instantly get more reach because right now Facebook is focused on video. Uh, you're more likely to show up in people's news feeds, which then leads to more eyes and more likelihood of people you know, liking your content and sharing it, which then of course as we know down the line that just means that there's more audience there for anything else that you post. Um, and what we learned on Facebook is our brands uh, you know, are really appreciated mostly for their local coverage. And um, so um, our audiences really um, do come to our Facebook pages uh, for our local coverage. Um, let's go on to if you still need convincing. So average engage engagements per post type. You can see that video, uh, not non-live, is number one. Then photo, then live video, then link. Um, so it shows the importance of video and how much Facebook really likes it as well. Um, so the News and Observer, um, they started posting more videos here. And uh, just recently, they, they were the number one in number of videos posted, number one in video engagement, and they're top five in overall engagement. And that's because they started to increase uh, their approach around video. Um, 
Facebook cross posting this probably applies to a few people in the room. Our team out in DC, they create a couple videos um, a day. Uh, they're captioned. Uh, they're usually kind of re repurposed from across the newsrooms. They'll add you know captions and some text sometimes, and maybe do some light re editing. Uh, and then they make that available. It's a simple uh, checkbox on Facebook. Super easy to post to your site, and uh, that's a real easy way to automatically um, boost the number of of native videos that you have on your site. Um, okay, so this is an example of uh, great um, aggregation. So um, a real-time producer got this video of this uh, airman surprising his kids um, after his deployment. I think he was the umpire, and they were throwing out the first pitch. And real cute video. Um, it wound up with over a million views across all of our sites that that focused this. Um, I think Fort Worth led the but the track there, they had a 250,000 views on that one video alone. Um, let's skip over this, guys. Okay. And as, as you can see, one of the most uh, engaged uh, Facebook lives was the general, was a special session. There were protesters in the gallery, and they ran live on, it for a very long time there, almost two hours. They had 637,000 views. Uh, I saw a, a Facebook Live that Kansas City started yesterday from the Eclipse, and I think it had over 900,000 views. So, you know, simple Facebook Lives can really grab an audience. Okay. Um, as any of you know, uh, dealing with video um, can be a little tricky in our current um, content management system. Uh, we've, add, we've found that there are 38 clicks to upload a video and then associate it with the story. Um, so when uploading a video, this means that you know, in, in the newsroom, you know, with Wi-Fi and everything else, uh, internet working properly, maybe about 10 to 15 minutes to complete the workflow. Remotely, it can be up to 15 or 20. Um, so the goal of our new video CMS, we're hoping to have soon, uh, we're hoping this will cause about a 75% reduction in workflow. You'll be able to upload a video one time, be accessible to all the Clash of Properties, and it will uh, be keeping up with all the new technologies. So hopefully things like 360 uh, will be able to do that in our site, or in our own player now. Um, so we're estimating that this is going to lead to a time savings. It's going to lead to faster publishing, which will, of course, lead to an increased audience. Um, 2018, uh, these are pretty aggressive growth um, targets uh, for 2018 uh, for the tier one newsroom. So if we're looking at 225%, you guys are tier two. Um, so looking for 150% growth next year. Um, starting in October, uh, you, your video bills uh, do start to increase. They take a little dip here in August and September, but then in October they'll start jumping back up. Um, in 2018, we're also looking to look at some secondary growth metrics. We're going to start looking at Facebook native video views. Uh, we're going to be looking at the time that people are spending per video and trying to strategize around how to increase that. Um, of course, we always want people to read more than one piece of content on our site uh, per visit. We'd like them to watch more than one video. That number has been going up.